Hi, I'm Bruce Sawalski. I'm author of Canadian Wilderness Survival and Chief Instructor of the Boreal Wilderness Institute. And today I want to talk about plant knowledge beyond the page. So if you want to learn real survival skills that you need when stranded, please like this video and support my YouTube channel by subscribing. So what do I mean by plant knowledge beyond the page? So how do I get beyond the page of a book? Well, let's think about something like this. This is Tom Alpole's um, Botany in a Day, and it's a plant identification method. I think it gets highly underrated. Tom Alpole is an excellent instructor with lots of skill, but because everything he does is self-published, I think it tends to get left out or ignored. And it shouldn't really be that way. And you should look around and find this stuff because this is an absolutely excellent plant identification guide. But literally, you got to take it with you. You know, mine's tagged and all marked up and everything else because you take that stuff in there and you work it out in the field. And that's the difference. The other thing we not have to talk about is every single plant manual or flora, fauna, whatever it happens to be, it's going to be specific to the region you live in. So this is an example. This is the Handbook of the Canadian Rockies by Ben Gad. It is a, a beautiful manual, incredibly well illustrated, just absolutely superb. But it covers only part of one of the 15 eco-regions of Canada, the Western Interior Mountains. And only part of it breaking it up into 21 little eco-zones within that bo uh, that area. It goes from Waterton Park, Waterton Glacier at the U.S. border, and it goes north into, into the Yukon. That's it. A very small slice of one territory and two provinces. That's how it works. You can't go beyond that. So what's an example? Kershaw's Plants of the Western Boreal Forest and Aspen Parkland. Again, this covers just a small area of Western Canada, but it's a good plant book. It's well worth it for identifying because it covers the plants in the area you happen to be traveling in. And it's on glossy paper. It's like Ben Gad's book. It's ready to go to the field. It's worth paying that extra money for something that's not going to be destroyed in the rain. It's worth paying the extra money for those pictures that you can much easily use for identification. So what else do we have? Well, I was talking about this book a little bit with um, Caleb Musgrave just a while ago, and it's Aboriginal Plant Use in Northwestern, uh, the Northwestern Boreal Forest. It's a Canadian uh, government publication designed originally for the First Nations people to able to look at plants from a scientific point of view to see what they could actually sell or produce as product to uh, create a little bit more income, which makes an awful lot of sense. And you look at some of these villages and without a lot of income beyond furs. And this book does a great job of it, but as a planted divanification guide, as a manual for individual plants of the boreal forest, this is top end. This is actually my favorite and I use it all the time. And I can flip it open and identify a plant like this, which is true tinder fungus or a notus obligatus. And it has a beautiful picture with a really good identification and information on it. Because why? This is a top end book that doesn't try to cover all of Canada or all of the world. It's a small region and that's what you have to get. Here's another great example. This is Colin Berner's The Flora and Fauna of Coastal British Columbia and the Pacific Northwest. Beautiful, glossy book. I picked this up while I was heading out to um, uh, Coastal British Columbia to teach survival uh, a few years ago. And I wanted to mark up and see what new was around. So I looked around in the book sections. I found this one. Wonderful book really, really in depth. And it covered a lot of plants out on the West Coast. I didn't know where it actually existed, like the yew tree, for example, that the, 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 the British will make bows out of, right? Famous long bow made with a yew. Well, it's in Western, it's in the Western um, uh, coastal rainforest. I had no idea. It's not a tree I'd come across before in any of my other journeys, or if I saw it, I misidentified it as something else, which happens because if you get used to one area and some of the trees, you might just hook, look, and say, yeah, yeah, that's a X tree. But really it wasn't. 
So it's a really good book. Again, covering only one region of Canada. That's it. Here's two other ones that are great examples of them. And it's Wild and Edible Berries of Alberta and Wild Mushrooms of Alberta. And these were uh, a series of field guides done by Tom Suravac. And Tom covers in literally just the edible berries. A little safety section, a little bit to understand what's around, and then you're done and you're into identification of those things you could actually eat. Same with mushrooms, although in my books, a little bit more dangerous, but I thought I'd take a look at it. Small ban manual made specifically for one province with only the mushrooms or berries in that region, and that's it. So what happens is, if you want to pick up a manual, if you want to have plant knowledge beyond the page, the manuals are there, but the manuals will be specific to very small regions of Canada or the United States or wherever you happen to live. Buy those books if you can, get them glossy so you can take them out in the field and actually get them a little wet because you'll want to take the book out there. You want to look and identify and if it's something like a mushroom, you might want two manuals and a lot of extra pictures. And if you're unsure, take a picture of it, bring it back and have someone who has better knowledge. Look at that plant and say, yes, it's X or it's Y because. And that's how you learn. And as you get the better identifying your plants, you may be able to do it without a book, depending on what the plant is and how often you see it and what stage it's in. So, wanna go beyond the pages of, a, of, a, of the book Bring the book out to the field with you. Buy a book of that specific region and make sure you carry it with you. So if you like this life-saving knowledge that you find on this channel, please support it by liking this channel, sharing this video, following me on Twitter and the Boreal Wind Institute on Facebook. Thank you. Stay safe. And if you're stranded in the wilderness, always remember just stop and survive.